This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edge Face of Journey Investigations, everybody! We're continuing with Terminal About Reminiscence. We're still in the beginning, by the way. Wow! <laughs> this is pretty... where the cases start getting pretty long. That's fine. But it's still not If it's a long case, case that's good, I'm fine with that. It's when it's a long case with bam, and all the craziness, and then it's like. Anyhow, we're cross examining Kalish. It was you. a week ago. Hold it! I feel like I should have given her a better voice because she looks so weird. A week ago. Then you and Detective Gumshoe are acquaintances? <laughs> no way. I only met him in person today. Then how did you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. All defense attorneys see him at the crime I saw the detective get chewed out. By a living Faraday. Hmm? I've never been to the precinct before. Mr. Faraday was upset? Yeah. You know what else? Mr. Faraday isn't exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> there he was, totally beat right in the face. <laughs> and the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, like he was about to die. I think when she's doing that, she's like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure she is, but... Like, holding back her laughter. Just like the face he's making now, right? Uh, I'm completely innocent, I tell you. <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> it was quite the scene with the detective. Mm. He stood there super pale. I mean, yeah, this seems like if I was in a, a lawyer, I would totally be the person who's like trying to be serious, but I'd just be like, <laughs> oh my god. So, so he stupid. died while he was on the toilet? <laughs> Not that. I'd just be more like, oh, you were such a stupid person. You could have gotten out of this pretty easily. Yeah. You just stood there watching this unfold in front of you? Yeah. I have to say, it was very enjoyable, too. But that's why when I saw Detective Gumshoe earlier, I didn't knew to stay clear of him. No way! I thought it was because I had something stuck on my face! <laughs> but you do! Huh? What have I got stuck on my face? Let's start with your eyes, nose, mouth. Oh, and those ridiculous eyebrows! Huh? <laughs> oh man, that scene with your head is just too much fun. Miss Yu, if you don't mind, I'd like to return to your testimony now. <laughs> sure, why not? A brand new detective suddenly gets his salary cut. That's, That's reason, reason enough for a grudge. Hold it! Good grudge. Zach's grudge. <laughs> hmm, to cut a new detective salary right off the bat like that. I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate, but is that a common practice? Uh, speaking of cutting my salary, didn't you fret to do that to me <laughs> earlier too? I suppose I did. It's only natural to cut a worthless detective salary down to its actual worth. Wow. My father can even fire anyone new or old with a snap of his fingers. <laughs> Do you think maybe that's reason enough for detectives to hate you people? Well, I guess they really shouldn't cut people's pay. Also, check out myself in the mirror. Mm. Man, he's like, she's like laughing her heads off, head off. And he's just like, hey, it's like I'm smoking this cig cigarette, looking at myself. In the mirror. Yeah, are you allowed to smoke in the precinct? I mean, I don't it's, think so. It's not lit. It's probably just like that chef that you. That's she just, just like yes. she has the cigarette stuck in, in her, her mouth. Like, but, like our boss got really mad at her. She's like, I'm not smoking. I just need to suck she, that like, nicotine out. There was a really, really bad day in the kitchen where we had like two weddings, two hundred people each, and they did not plan this very well. And so we had to make so much food, and the chef was just kind of like, <sighs> like the whole day with the cigarette. In her One mouth. person who played this game, they're like, is he holding a corn dog? <laughs> No, he's holding a mirror. It kind of does look like that. It, on your screen, it looks way more like a corn dog than mine. Yeah. Detective Bad, don't tell me Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier. Well, how's that for a perfect explanation? Hold it! You call your explanation perfect? <laughs> Is it not to your liking? <laughs> Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? 
Maybe I should wait and listen to what she has to say for a bit longer. Detective Gumshoe certainly had a motive to kill Mr. Faraday. However, there is just one thing I can't wrap my head around in this explanation. I'll just have to force Miss Yu to explain herself for me. Alright, if you could clear up this one thing for me. How Mr. Farday was killed, motive for killing Mr. Rell, Farday and Gumshoe's relation. Yeah, motive for killing Mr. Rell. Obviously. You still haven't explicitly established how Mr. Farday was killed. Objection! Going senile already, Miles? Mr. Farday was stabbed to death with his knife. With a knife, not his. No, not that! What I meant to ask was, how were the two men killed when they were in a guarded room? We're going to find that out very soon from Gumshoe at his interrogation, boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right, Mr. Edgeworth. Poor baby. Tell you what, I'll let you have another go. How's that? I do not like this one. <laughs> She's weird. Not as weird as some characters, but like... Well, no, it's hard to get weirder than, uh, Trilo. It's also hard to get weirder than, um, narcoleptic flight attendants. And Zinio. And Zinio. Oh my gosh. Actually, allow me to <laughs> ask the detective directly. What was your relation to Mr. Faraday? Mr. Faraday was in charge of the training rookie detectives uh, to testify in trials. I met him on the very first day I entered the criminal affairs department, pal. Oh? I had no idea Mr. Faraday was so involved. Faraday. He may look like an easygoing guy, but he's actually a bit of a nut for strict discipline and manners. Guys like Gumshoe tend to be rubbing the wrong way. There. Now you know how the detective and Mr. Faraday were related. Happy now? No! Wait! <laughs> you said you only had one thing to ask, right? <sighs> Please allow me to ask about one more thing. <laughs> oh, you're right, Mr. Edgeworth. Poor baby. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Farday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rell? His motive for killing Rell? Like I would know. Hmm. If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? But that's impossible. She must know something. Oh, wait. <laughs> Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. <laughs> I didn't even do anything and you're already laughing away. Well, anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. <laughs> oh, perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so uptight, or this is a request for me to mock <laughs> Miles, Edward, I demand that you shut this rude woman up! I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. Also, how about you shut her up? You got a whip. Ahem. Oh, well, I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. Wow. Motive to kill the men. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rump. That's probably no. Oh, you What really about have Manny to... Coach and Dog? Yeah, you walk <laughs> out and talk to him for some time. All you really have to establish is someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity, and set up to look like they had killed each other. That's actually not a bad conclusion to draw. No, it's not. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both men? I should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. Mm -hmm. The second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member and the two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. Is there someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them? Meanwhile, are we actually ever gonna go to court? Probably not. It's, it's this is Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations. Investigations, not Ace Attorney Goes to Court, like Curious George Goes to Court. Curious George Goes to the Hospital? Yeah. <laughs> like that, there's a book, Curious George Goes to Court? No, I don't think so. Oh, Curious George great. Makes Pancakes, <laughs> that's the best one. That's good. Oh, good. I like that. 
So there is no one else who might have had a grudge against both Mr. Farday and Mr. Rell? I suppose no one is a bit of a stretch. But I'm pretty sure no one like that was here in the courtroom today. She's lying through her teeth. We just saw someone like that here earlier. Besides, you don't need to prove that the killer had a grudge against both men. All you really had to establish is someone had a grudge against one of the two Hold men. It. Someone with a grudge against one of the men. In that case, aren't there plenty of other people who fit the bill? Sure. After all, who doesn't garner scorn from another simply being by simply by being alive? Wow, Callisto. Simply by being alive, I say you. But the only one who held a grudge and acted upon it by killing was Detective Gumshoe. Ugh. And furthermore, Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Hardy's murder. So you're saying that he was basically silenced? Aren't you glad you managed to avoid the same fate, Your Honor? Why, if you had been the one to witness the bloody, blood-covered detective... <laughs> what? Detective got oh you. you! You wouldn't kill even oh me! Oh my god, look at his face! What? I, I could never do something as terrible as that, Your Honor! There's no need for even a second of deliberation. I will hand down my Whoa! verdict here! Your Honor, take a look around. We are not in court right now. It would be greatly appreciated if you would stay here with us in rea reality. Dak! Please forgive me! Uh, I know not what I do! <laughs> oh my gosh! What is this court system? <laughs> and you there, Miss Yu, hurry up and continue with your testimony. If you fail to do so, I will whip you into shape. I'm gonna whip into shape! <laughs> uh, legally blonde, sorry. I don't know that, so... Yeah, it's fine. <sighs> it, it, it made me think of it, because legally blonde, it's a girl who's a lawyer, or trying to be a lawyer, oh. and there's this weird girl who's a uh, ex- people? <laughs> no, uh, it's it's an exercise lady who gets um, convicted in a court case, like she's she's oh, um, a witness, and yeah, she has a song that she sings in the musical, but anyway. Okay. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. That's nice. Sounds kind of fun, actually. Anyway, Detective Gumshoe had to erase the witness, Mr. Rell. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like the I just realized she has slightly elf-like ears. They're a little pointy. Slightly. Also, she has the weird, like, what I can only describe as hot dog lips. Yeah. Um, from the Wii. <laughs> from the Mii Maker. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I didn't do it, pal! No hard feelings, but I don't think we can take the word of a criminal seriously. <laughs> But I, I can't, can't even begin to figure up ways to set up a crime scene. He's not wrong. I suppose you do lack the necessary tactical mind required to do such a thing. <laughs> Why don't you kick a man when he's down, pal? <laughs> you shouldn't have put yourself down, detective. You're a big boy. I bet you thought of it all by yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. And I worked real hard on it too, pal. No! I think this proves one thing about the detective. He has the mental acuity of a worm. I find, I find just glancing at that, I find him with Edward say, he's the mental acuity of a woman. I'm like, what? Whoa! <laughs> but no worm. No, uh, Edward's, Edward's, not, Edward's sexist. not sexist. I have to admit, her explanation makes sense. However, there is also something she overlooked in her testimony. I should present that piece of evidence and see if I can't make her see the truth. There's no one out there with a motive to kill Well, them. they're definitely. Because, because, hey buddy, Manny Cochin is like a total Cochin. scumbag. Oh, and I also <laughs> forgot, she could totally have done it too. Because her mother was killed, or aunt, or somebody related to her, right? Someone with her, her last name, yeah. Someone with her last name. Mr. Yu, I believe there is someone you overlooked in making your statement. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Farday and Mr. Rell. I can think of at least one person that fits that bill. He was the suspect in the original KG-8 incident. And a member of the Kodobian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Cochin. That's right, the very man who came to visit you uh, earlier out in the hallway. So many dots. The man who killed a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Rell. 
and the man who is the lead prosecutor of the KG8 incident, Mr. Faraday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have a reason or two. You! You covered for me, pal! Could you get your elbow out of my face? Uh, maybe you're not such a bad guy after all! Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a suspect, make no mistake about that. The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hold. B but I didn't do it! Hmm. You will stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Cochin for me. And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this leak out. You want to investigate Cochin? You'd just be wasting your time. Oh, really? And why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery watching the trial. Or so I was told. Um, but the trial wasn't going on when this happened. No, but he's every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy ever since he arrived. Then, the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. Here's the thing, though. If Detective Bad is in cahoots, like we could have like a Morgan and Eenie Miney type of situation, yeah, he's true. total authority over most of these people. He could easily just be like, yo, coaching, come with me. Bro, let's hang out. Let's, let's grab I got a, burritos. I got burritos and tea. What more could you want? I suppose so. No way! Come on, Detective Bad! You gotta believe me, sir! I really was in that hallway the whole time, sir! This was his last name. I never took a single step into this room, sir! Okay, but are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? No, I... No, there was no one else, sir. Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of the crime scene all by himself. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he would at the very least offer up I spaced out a while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshoe. Time for your interrogation. The judge is still fuming. Also, I thought his robes would be longer. <laughs> nope. Detective Bad! Miles Edgeworth, I will go ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that. Right, everyone? Ho ho ho. Von Karma comes running in. Well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? Before we do miss you, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? She's still back, back, back. Oh, I'm the forensics guy standing at attention. <laughs> I want to talk to him. <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> Edgeworth! Where are you off to? Aren't you the one who wanted to talk? Oh, yes. Uh, sorry about that. I just heard about burritos. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? So, what did you want to ask me about? The current case of the murdered Kodobian embassy staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more since you are directly tied to the KG-8 yeah. incident. I'd appreciate it if you could stop with the false accusations. Faceless outbursts are useless both inside and outside of the courtroom, don't you know? I do. But I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> I think you can stop making that ultra-serious face in front of me! <laughs> if you could please stop laughing for just one second! I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG-8 incident she is. That must really hurt to move like that constantly. Her back is going to be in terrible yeah. shape when she's first. And her shoulders are like moving up and down. <laughs> it is a shame that we will not be able to face each other. It was to be my first trial too. Oh, was that a de declaration of war? How nice it is to be young and carefree. You're still young, you. You're 22. Oh wow, she is young. And what nice squeaky clean badge you've got yourself there. I'm jealous. 
I'm sure its gleam will dull over time with experience. <laughs> Are you saying that your reputation will also tarnish over time with it? Ugh, that's not what I meant. Oh, well, you just can't avoid some things in life. I'll never allow my badge or my reputation to become tarnished. Well, we know how that's gonna work out. Mr. Faraday was killed with a knife, correct? I feel bad for him being killed with evidence. You prepare yourself, it's just awful. Miss Yu, what do you think about this piece of evidence? What do I think? Well, other than the blood, it's pretty... It's a very pretty and ornate knife. I'd love to use it as an ornament in my home. If it's alright with you, may I have it? Well, what are you talking about? This is a weapon that was used to kill someone with. <laughs> Why so serious? I think someone needs to loosen up. Ugh, there she goes again. Looks like Mr. Rell was killed by the very gun he used by the embassy staff member. He killed- he used to kill the embassy staff member. Mm -hmm. You speak of the concept of karma, I assume. And that you take your life into your own hands when you commit a crime, correct? I never thought I'd be dealing with a gun this soon upon becoming a prosecutor. Ah, oh, well, for a veteran like me, they're pretty much par for the course. Okay, you you can't have graduated law school very long ago. No, and like... She's so normally, from what I'm figuring out, is you go through university and get a bachelor's degree, then you go to law school. Yeah! I've noticed, like, you can't get through law Unless school. Unless you know Von Karma! I don't think you can actually get through law school anymore. So, if you graduate at 21, you probably won't be a prosecutor until you're like 25. And she's 22. She took the bar when she was 15. She took the bar when she was like 20, maybe. Because I think you can just okay. transfer out. Two years working at a job is not a veteran. Not at no, all. No, not at all. I've been working at my job for almost two years and I'm not a veteran. Yeah. I only worked a summer and I'm absolutely not a veteran. Kind of were though at the end. At the end, yeah. We're, I was Marty, I was we're so sorry to see you go. I was employee of the month, bro. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, even if it's just once, I've always wanted to try firing one. Where is this going? What? <laughs> hey, is that thing loaded? Do you think I could give it a try right now? D don't be ridiculous. This isn't some kind of toy. <laughs> I was only joking. Duh. Why is it that anything I have to say is a joke to her? I just realized what she laughs like right there. Do you remember? Okay, no. Do you remember Bruce Bake Off, um, the gal that everyone hated um, from that one season? Was it like Nadine? Nadia. Nadia. Don't she's say that. We're the only people who didn't like her. Really? She's wildly popular. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. uh, well, we didn't like her. We didn't like her because of her flavor combinations. We're like, why would you make like a bubblegum cake? Yeah. And she was like hyper serious. Anyway, but Nothing when she laughs, she has that same serious look as her. And she also cover her mouth with like, I shouldn't be laughing, but I'm laughing. Like that kind of, yeah. I don't know. That made me think Maybe. A little bit. Miss Yu, what do you think about this piece of evidence? Actually, Edgeworth, I'm interested in finding out what you think about it. Hmm. I don't really know all that much about it. Hmm. Then I don't really know all that much about it either. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I can't be of any service. I shouldn't push her too much. She'll just start laughing again. In reality, that's how she's so thin, is she laughs all the time. It's a great exercise. Ab workout. Miss you. I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG8 incident. The file is your proof? Very well, then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG8 incident? For the suspect, for the victim, for the lead prosecutor. Through the victim, right? Yeah. The victim? You're linked to this case through the former suspect, Manny Cochin. Yes, and that sheds light on our discussion. How? What? It looks like I jumped the gun on this one. <laughs> Weren't you the one who mentioned it earlier? About how Mr. Cochin came to see me. Obviously that makes us acquaintances, right? Yeah, I suppose so. So is that all you wanted to talk about? If so, I'd like to get going. W wait a second! You tell me how I'm related. You're linked to this case through Mr. Faraday. Well, I guess we were just duking it out in the courtroom. I suppose that makes us related in some sense. So what? Who cares? Uh, I suppose. Ugh, I guess that wasn't it. 
So is that all you wanted to talk about? Your connection to the KG-8 incident is through the victim. The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me that with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> Sorry, but we're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face. But I couldn't help it. <laughs> Miss Yu, I ask that you please tell me the truth. Ahem. Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. As you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group was my sister CCU. Oh, I thought it was like her mom. As I thought, why did you think it was her mom? Callisto is 22. How, Look at the photo of CCU. Look? She's young! That looks... that could be She has a... no wrinkles. Yeah, but some, some people, man, they've Where's, got, where's they've this guy? It's like 25. Got genetics! That's um, true. Some of it, too, is like... With her, if you were like, she's 22, I'd be like, yeah, okay. If you were like, she's 32, I'd be like, yeah, okay. If you said <laughs> 42, I'd be like, wow, she looks amazing! <laughs> and she was killed right before she was about to testify at the impending trial. Wow, that's pretty similar. By Manny Cochin. Why were you hanging out with him then? She killed him. <laughs> no, no, she didn't. That couldn't have been. That would be great if she did, but... But because he tried to kill one, uh, because he tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life, completely careless. Careful. All because of a lack of evidence. No, I heard that the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cochin's trial was over. Apparently, a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. Karma. But the evidence had been tampered with. Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out of the Amano group by one of its secretaries. Or secretaries? Secretaries, yeah. Yeah, secretaries. They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turned out they were in the league. Or turns out they were in the league with each other all along. They were in the baseball league with each other all along. Uh, let's <laughs> put <laughs> baseball. How big was that smuggling game. ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense on this case that people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. You mean you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. I think it absolutely does. They're killed the same way! Yeah. They were about to go testify and then they were like, Shazam! No homework tonight. <laughs> yeah, no homework tonight for you. Why did Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, came to watch the trial. Apparently he only found out I was the defense lawyer on this case after he'd arrived. He figured he should say, hi, and one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. This guy's a creep. I hate him. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop it with the scary face already. I'm fine, really. I gave him a good slap across the face. The way she talks about slapping him as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Ahem. But it's just as Mr. Bat says. I'm surprised she only gave him a slap if he killed her sister. Yeah, no. I'm like... The, the lives we believe. He's not related to the double murder. I asked around and people in the gallery claimed he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. I'm wondering, though, again, if it's, like, a double thing. Like, he had his walkie-talkie in his seat, like, Ayo. Hey, Manfred, the kill him. Okay. <laughs> it sounded like Donkey Kong. Okay. Okay. No, I'm more like, because he'll have, like, a walkie-talkie. He'd be like, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, ba the bad man's arrived. Or like, uh, the bad man's arrived. The, the eggs have hatched. The cabbage is in, in the, the backyard. backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I guess I wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edward, you really are too serious for your own good. Laugh away the pain, you. Laugh away the pain. 
You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I work in my own way, and I will catch this criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. Yeah, Edgeworth likes being a workaholic. Oh yeah. There's a reason he literally never goes home. He's got his, like, couch in the office that I think he just kind of sleeps on. At least he did in case one. Or he was going to in case one. Yeah. A good nap, or whatever. Good nap. <laughs> Look at you with your game face on, ready to go. I- I'm making no such face! Did you know? Laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired of making such a serious face all the time? I'm charged with making sure that all the criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. Like Manny Kochin. Yeah. I swear, if they had a play on words type of thing, like, sadly, when I was watching Doki Doki Literature Club, when there was all the things that were, like, connecting up, I'm like, oh. What if she's like, I gotta tie up some loose ends. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, super intense. The KG-8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief that these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus that detective, Detective Gumshoe. It's obvious he's lying, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over. But whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. Out a cruel irony. Mm hmm. It is interesting to play in the past. Meanwhile, we haven't seen any more of Kay after she bought her thing from the vending machine. Correct. <laughs> Kidnapped? Question mark? Yeah. That can happen. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're finally past the beginning of the case. <laughs> so now I think we're going to be in the middle of part one. So thanks, thanks for watching, and tune in for next time. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day, and God bless.